This is part four of the flaming spirit of Belden Hall. What are you talking about? I exclaimed, thinking him an old fool. Look, here's the place where I tore down the vine. Why, where is it? I left it prone on the shrubbery here and someone has taken it away. But the roots are not cut, and the brickwork that I exposed is all covered again with ivy. A blank look came to my face, I know, but an expression of triumphant satisfaction marked the caretaker's features. Tango at the same moment cuddled into the circle of my folded arms and crept close, trembling, as though for sanctuary. Now do you believe me? Bell whispered eagerly. There's something up there that's more than human. He checked himself as though afraid that he would say too much. If you won't take my word for it, look at Tango. Dumb critters sense nonsense, I exclaimed. But in truth, Tango was acting peculiarly. I had never seen him show such apparent fright before, and where had I heard that reversals in the accustomed course of nature presaged the presence of the supernatural? Certainly I had torn a great vine from that very wall but a few hours ago, and there was absolutely no mark of disturbance there now. We will both feel more natural when we are established by the fireside, Tango and I, I added. Please lay a fire at once in the bedchamber up there, and touch it off. Not if I was to have all the money Park Belden has, the caretaker replied vehemently. I might lay the fire but light it? Never. Why? Don't you know the words of the- I don't want to know the words of any foolish old gibberish, I exclaimed abruptly. Park Belden expressly stated that I might have a fire in that room. He did, did he? Bell queried craftily. He ought to know if anyone does. Know what? I asked. Don't talk in riddles. But you said you didn't want to know the words I was a going to tell you. Now you tell me something, young feller. Does old Park still keep his hand over that right cheek? Yes, I replied. And what is more, I know what's under it. You do? He asked eagerly. Tell me. I don't feel at liberty just now, I answered. But how could there be any connection between that and the room up yonder? There's plenty of connection, young feller, plenty. Lots more than you or I or anybody else senses. You'll find out if you're fool enough to sleep in a cursed room. There, I've said it, I laughed. Do you know what a person is apt to think nowadays if people are too insistent in warning him away from some particular place on the ground that it's haunted? No, he replied indifferently. What? That there's mischief brewing in that particular spot of a highly human origin, I said. Criminals, you know particularly like the protection of a house supposed to be haunted. To be continue in part 5 of The Flaming Spirit of Belden Hall. Hey there! Remember to subscribe to XOXO Gossip Lips for more future videos, pack with entertainments, knowledge and funds. Give this video a thumb up and please share it with your friends and families too. Our catchy background tunes was originally composed by Pierre de Matique. Please consider to subscribe to his channel as well. Thank you for watching. Cheers!